Hi, this is Dr. Don, and we are talking about skills for couples. When couples come in and meet with me, and we have an initial session to talk, and they start describing things they'd like to work on in their relationship, almost without exception, a couple is going to mention that communication is an area that they'd like to see improved. So I'd like to visit with you a little bit today about some ideas about how to improve our couple's communication. Some very simple uh, techniques and some ideas that you can think about that may improve your communications just beginning right away. The first one has to do with the way in which I speak, speaker skills. And there are different kinds of statements that we can use. The safest, especially when we're talking about difficult items, difficult topics in a marriage, there are what we call I statements. An I statement, just like the letter, is going to take responsibility for what I'm thinking and put it squarely on my shoulders. I think we need to save up a little bit of money for income tax next spring. That's my idea, and the I statement puts it firmly on my shoulders. Those are safe, those are respectful, and those are clear, and we recommend those be used. In contrast, a you statement is normally an attack. Same idea. You don't ever want to save up money even though I know we've got income tax due. Did you hear the edge to that? Normally, if I send a you statement to the other person, it's going to exact one of two responses. The other person is either going to do another you statement, well, you never do listen to me when I come up with ideas anyway, and here we're off and running, we've got a fight started, or they're going to go silent. They're going to hide out because they don't like conflict, and I'm not going to get much of a response at all. So an I statement puts the responsibility squarely on me, a you statement is like a six gun. I'm pulling it out and I'm shooting it at the other person and they're either going to duck and hide or they're going to fire back at me. The third kind of statement is a we statement. We need to do a better job around here of saving up money. A we statement is actually a veiled you statement. Because what I'm saying is, I'm saying you need to save more money like I've been telling you to do. So a we statement is a veiled you statement. It is once again an attack. So our first rule of thumb in terms of speaker skills is it's always safer to stay with I statements and stay away from you statements and we statements that tend to be attacks on the other person. All right, let's talk about another piece of the communication process. If you took speech 101 in college, probably the first thing you learned the first day of class was the axiom that the listener determines if communication is going to take place. So the reality of these videos that I'm doing is it's not my speaking that's important, it's what you're able to hear and then implement if any of that's helpful to you. So the listener determines if communication is going to occur or not. There are two kinds of listening that occurs in a relationship. The first kind of uh, listening is the one that we recommend. It's empathetic listening. Empathetic listening is going to listen to the entire message. And by the entire message, I mean what is being said and also the nonverbal. It's going to listen to the content as well as the emotion. An empathetic listener is just delightful in the communication process because they're engaged, they're empathetic, they're compassionate, their mind is engaged, their heart is engaged, and they want to move toward a solution. And that's really good stuff. Empathetic listening is absolutely the lifeblood of any relationship, and it's really, really good stuff. Contrast that to the second form of listening that we do not recommend, 
which is deliberative listening. Deliberative listening is me listening to my partner like a prosecution attorney. If I'm on trial for my life, and I'm sitting in the courtroom and my attorney is sitting next to me, when the other attorney gets through speaking, I want my attorney to stand up and rip everything he has said to shreds. Because I want him to have been listening for what's wrong, listening to argue, listening to defend, listening to be able to engage in conflict. That's really great in a courtroom if I'm on trial, and that's great for legal processes, but it's just poison for a marriage and for a relationship. Because what it does is, it means that one person is simply listening in order to, and what they'll do is they'll, they'll quit listening as soon as they hear something they disagree with, and then they begin thinking about what they're going to say in rebuttal to that. So I'm only listening for what's wrong in the other person's case and looking for an opening to interrupt and make my counterpoint. And so you can see where I'm going with this. Obviously, relationships that are distressed are in a downward spiral of one person listening, getting offended, starting to think about what they're going to say, and then interrupting the other person. The other person listens until they disagree, they begin to make their speech in their mind, and then they begin interrupting the other person as well. So we say on the first hand, I statements where I take responsibility are very powerful for me to be able to say this is what I think and feel. Number two, we've said empathetic listening is very, very important because it gives not only my mind to the relationship, but it brings my heart to the relationship. And I can say to this person, you can tell me what you're thinking and what you're feeling, and it doesn't have to be said perfectly. I'm not going to jump down your throat on that. So we've got speaker skills. We've got listener skills. Let's talk about the process then. The process of good couples conversation, the way I teach it to my couples is, it's like a tennis game. It's like a tennis game. Tennis is no fun if one person is serving and constantly acing the other person and there's never a return of the serve. Tennis works when we serve and we return serve. So it is then that marital communications does not work very well if I'm just lecturing the other person and there's never any feedback from the other person on what it is that I've said. So what we recommend to couples is, if we've got two individuals, if this person sends a message over, if I say, you know, uh, I really have a difficult time communicating with your dad. We've got Thanksgiving coming up, and I'm really worried about, you know, how I can be there for four days and we can all get along because it's not gone well in the past. So pretty important issue there. Before she comes up with her ideas and her suggestions, it really works real well if she will clarify what it is that he said. All she has to do is say, okay, are you telling me that you're pretty anxious about visiting my family over the holidays? No, 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 no. I'm just saying I want to go be with your family. I'm just worried about my relationship with your dad because it seems like he doesn't like me. Okay. You see, that clarification does two very powerful things. Number one, it slows the conversation down because arguments tend to get faster and faster and faster. The second thing that it does is it clarifies what it was that he said because sometimes she can misunderstand what that message is and then her response is off. So we recommend then that couples take turns, especially when it's on delicate or important items, and they use this tennis game, which is just another word for clarification skills. It's feedback. 
It's me understanding what my partner is saying before I launch into what it is that I have to say. But it means that both people are going to have to be disciplined, be a little bit reflective, and take their time in uh, the communication process. So what we're recommending then to you is one, we use I statements, two, we rely upon empathetic listening skills, and three, we use clarification in terms of this tennis game back and forth with important messages. Give it a try. Mm -hmm.